I am here to tell a simple story, a story of how a villager like me from a middle class family became an entrepreneur and how self-belief was made a requisite by, you know, incidents in my life. So to understand you know, what I am trying to convey today, it is important to understand a bit more about me. So my passion, I am a technologist and entrepreneur. I have, I have uh, founded three companies. Two of them are multinational companies with multi-million in revenues in the last four years of time. So the reason I said a simple story, because you will not hear any hardships, pain, double childhood and all of that. And I used a specific word requisite because there are many incidents in my life where destiny never gave me a choice but to succeed and come out as a winner. Today I am going to talk about my journey and how these incidents have helped me in my journey. So I would have to take you to my childhood where it all started. So I am born and raised in a small village west of Pune, Maharashtra in a farmer family. And I was studying in a school, it's a restriction some stuff school back there in Maharashtra, which you can you know consider like a government school. And I was an average student scoring probably 55 to 60 percent marks in fifth, sixth standard uh, in most of my exams. And one interesting thing happened actually uh, when I was in eighth standard. Okay, so my father was actually a milkman as a side business to our you know farming. And in addition to selling the uh, milk to a dairy, uh, he used to sell this milk to a lot of residence teachers. Because you know we had uh, a lot of residence teachers in our school. And he used to sell uh, milk to, you know these, these teachers are basically, you know, very these customers back then. And interestingly, uh, in my school, my class, a lot of, you know, daughters and sons of this, uh, resident teachers, you know, were also there. And in 8th standard, one of the teachers who was actually a PT teacher, a physical education teacher, uh, probably he hardly understands anything, but he started talking to my father, you know, when he goes every day in the morning to give milk, saying that Sanjay is a very intelligent student, but he's not getting the good marks because most of the teachers are favoring their sons and daughters in the class. And I was hardly scoring. A 55 to 60 percent mark. I was not even in the top 25 in, in the you know in my school in the village, right? And this was not one of the one of the discussion. This has became you know slowly slowly an ongoing discussion. And like every father, my father also started believing you know I am the you know most intelligent and smart student. And he started believing you know based on this conversation that in the 10th we used to have board exams. So my son will probably talk in the board exams in the 10th standard, okay? And slowly, slowly started talking about the same thing with the villagers. When I was in 9th standard, it was almost broadcasted that I'm going to be in the, uh, you know, you know uh, I'm going to talk in the board exams. My marks, I know the reality, probably villagers also know the reality through their own kids. And I started taking, you know, because it is broadcasted, I take, started taking the study seriously in the 9th. I saw some improvement. I was actually in the top 10 ranks in the 9th standard. And true to my disbelief, I topped the 10th exams in, in my village. When I look at this incident, because this was the foundation of my belief system, I had an obligation to be successful, to, you know, ensure that my father's belief doesn't take a hit and it didn't, right? So you are what you tell yourself. Self-confidence is the magic, you know, which you do to yourself to get to the destiny. And in my case, this destiny, destiny was more of, more of an obligation for me, right? So after school and college, I joined a tech company as a, as a junior developer and coming from a village, the first challenge was actually English communication. I remember probably in 2009 when I went on a first call uh, call with you know one of our client, I hardly understood a line. It was not mainly because of English I would say, but it was mainly you know also because of the US accent. 
right? And then I decided that you know I have to overcome. And this self belief, you know, which was a confidence which got you know built over the years through different incidents, like I told the one, uh, you know, I have decided to join the support team. Developers hate the support team because you you don't have to develop, you have to do the work in the night shape, a lot of communication and all that, typically developers don't like it, but I have decided to join that, did that in few months, you know, I got a good hold, uh, not good, but probably at least the hold, you know, which is good enough for me to move forward on, on the English, you know, during that time. And as I, you know, uh, kept working in the company, I have subconsciously also developed, you know, goal that I want to become an entrepreneur at some point of time. So that has been going, you know, and uh, parallelly in my mind. And in 2013-14, I have actually decided to start a startup with my friends in a part-time basis because I can't afford really, really to, uh, you know, uh, give away the salary. So I started a startup. It failed miserably. I lost all my savings. Of course, the job was going on, so I just went back to the job. Again, started focusing on the job. And again, within one and a half and two years, I was not able to enjoy the job at all. So I again came out with a group of friends, started another startup, again in a part-time basis, and I have again failed. And this time, the beauty is, I knew the reason why I failed. I have lacked the you know, ability to explain my clients why they should be paying me. I have lacked badly in the sales and marketing coming from a technology background. So this time when I again went back to the job, focusing on that, I clearly knew what really I want to do in the job. I started focusing on you know, sales and marketing in my job, started getting more involved in that. Within two years of period, probably I made uh, 14 to 15 trips to North America to really meet each and every customer, get involved in every new opportunity. And in 2018, with friends, I have again decided to do, get into a startup. And this time I was clear that I don't want it to leave any option or plan B. So I have decided to quit my job as a first thing when I decided this. So we started the startup in 2018. We were not, you know, getting any salary for one year time. Not That was not a problem because I think I earned a good money uh, in my job. So my loans and liabilities were taken care of well. In a year's time, we started getting some salary. So we started taking a 50,000 per month as a salary uh, after a year of startup. And this was very satisfying. It's a very small number, you know, against what I used to earn as an employee. But this was very satisfying. Within six months, March, April 2020, the pandemic has hit. And our clients stopped paying us and we had to again go back on the zero salary. And it was a very challenging time, probably a much more challenging than the challenges I faced in the failed startups. But this time, the belief was there, the need was there, because I don't have any other option for survival. So we kept moving actually. Uh, we have decided to get into some other businesses, some other services, and we also started another company in the middle of pandemic who was doing other things. Within six months, travel started resuming a bit. The reason that uh, you know our challenge was huge in pandemic because our startup was also in the travel, which was worst impacted. No one was traveling, so revenues went down to zero. Within six months, when travel started again, we actually, you know, started getting some revenue, and we have decided a goal, very ambitious goal, that we will acquire 100 customers in this financial year. This was a goal no one has ever even seen or any confidence or any understanding how to really reach there, including me or all of my co-founders and the leadership. We had no idea. But to surprise. Within a year's time, we have acquired 103 customers in that year. And when, you know, I think about those two failed startups and why the next two were successful, you can say the experience has helped, I gained sales and marketing, but the real reason was the purpose. I had a purpose, a very clear purpose of making the next two startups successful for survival. Okay, so this, you know, the talk, which I started with my childhood, I want to take you all back to your childhood to kind of conclude. So do you remember this, uh, of, you know, a famous Tom and Jerry cartoon? Yes. You all, right? So why Jerry always won and Tom didn't? 
because Jerry had very clear purpose, a purpose of survival and that's the reason he always won. Had he failed, his life is gone, right? So, a clear purpose with uh, a strong self-belief system actually always, you know, get you through. When I look at all the incidents in my life, let it be coming as a topper in the board exam, learning English, or building the successful startups, there was one thing which is common, and that is a clear purpose. Let it be a purpose of survival or something else, but a very clear purpose and a strong belief system get you through. And this is the reason I am where I am today. I hope you all have something to ponder upon today. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for listening to me. Thank you.